What's going on guys? This is Vinylik Puma, back with another Borderlands 2 countdown video for you guys, and today I figured I would go over 10 of what I think are among some of the best guns and weapons to farm or just get when you're beginning the game for the first time. Now, finding good weapons in Borderlands 2 early on can be difficult or require a bit of luck, and today I'd like to go over some gear you can get relatively consistently to help with that first playthrough. Also, and real quick before we start, but if you do end up enjoying this video or if it ends up helping you, definitely be sure to hit the like button on this video as it really helps out the channel. But otherwise, guys, let's just go ahead and start here with our 10th entry, and that is going to be for the Fremington's Edge Sniper. Despite some issues with weapon sway while trying to aim down the scope, the Fremington's Edge is a somewhat overlooked but pretty decent sniper you can obtain and use for a few levels during your very first playthrough. This is because the Fremington's Edge has a unique property that greatly increases its critical hit base bonus as long as you're aiming down the scope. To simplify this, the Fremington's Edge deals about four times the base damage on a critical assuming you don't aim down the scope which is in line with snipers from most other manufacturers. However, and provided you do actually aim down the scopes, you're potentially dealing about 5.5 damage than what's listed, which is actually pretty good and gives the Fremington's Edge a bit of an edge over many other snipers in the game. With this said, while the Fremington's Edge does have a bit of a lower base damage than some other snipers, and thus your overall crit damage can actually be exceeded by some other snipers, you have to keep in mind that the Fremington's Edge does at least have the advantage of being able to come in all elements and has a very high scope zoom, making long range shots a bit easier to pull off. Now, unlike many of the other entries on this list, obtaining one of these isn't necessarily guaranteed as rather than being a specific quest reward, the Fremington's Edge will require a little bit of farming. What you'll need to do is encounter Assassin Wreath during or after the Assassinate the Assassin side quest in Southpaw's Demon Power, and provided you defeat him, he has a chance to drop the Fremington's Edge. With this in mind, it's up to you whether you want to pursue this one or not, simply for the fact that there's a good chance it could become obsolete by the time you're level 12 or 13. Number 9. The Good and Bad Touch SMGs Though both of these SMGs are going to require a decent amount of money to get as you have to tip Moxie in her bar in Sanctuary to get them, both the Good and Bad Touch are generally good SMGs overall. Both of them are Moxie weapons, meaning that they can heal for a percentage of damage dealt, and compared to many other SMGs you can acquire early on, the Good Touch and Bad Touch generally have better stats than average due in part to their purple rarity. When it comes to differences between the two, the Bad Touch is a darker red color, it's corrosive elemental and tends to be a little bit harder to get than the good touch. Accounts vary, but in my experience, I'd say you can really only get one of these once per playthrough, if not once per character. So just be aware of that if you decide to go and tip Moxie for an SMG. Fortunately, the good touch on the other hand doesn't suffer from this issue and is not only easier to get, but it's actually a little bit better thanks to its higher healing capabilities, clocking in at about 2.5% of health returned to the player as a result of damage dealt, as opposed to 2%. Additionally, the good touch is a fire elemental weapon, which means it should be more useful more of the time, so that's something else to consider. I think my only complaint with both of these and the reason they're not higher on this list is because they're expensive. You usually need about $10,000 in game or more to get these reliably, which may not be feasible for you if this is your first character, and you may only get that money until the very end of your first playthrough. That aside, these are some great and virtually guaranteed SMGs you can get early on to really help make the rest of the game easier. Plus, and in the case of the good touch where you can get it multiple times, you can tip Moxie every few levels or as you progress through the story missions to get progressively higher level versions. Number 8. E-Tech Pistols While there's a slight learning curve to using them compared to other weapons, E-Tech Pistols are actually fairly decent when you're first starting out. What they do is fire needle-like projectiles that eventually come into contact with an enemy and then subsequently explode after a certain period of time. Additionally, E-Tech pistols can come in two varieties with dart pistols having homing properties, while spikers fire projectiles that are able to stick to surfaces. 
Personally, I'd have to say I prefer spikers for the reason that a low-level E-Tech spiker pistol can be used to regenerate rocket ammo once you get an absorption shield at a higher level, but if this is your first time playing through Borderlands 2, both dart and spiker variants should work pretty well in your very first playthrough. It also doesn't hurt that an E-Tech pistol can be acquired fairly easily towards the beginning of the game. All you have to do is complete the Medical Mystery Excommunicate side quest and turn the quest in to Dr. Zed, and you'll receive an E-Tech pistol. The manufacturer and type of E-Tech pistol you will receive will vary, but this thing can really help you get through some of the early game areas, and assuming you get a good spiker variant, you can always use it to regenerate some rocket ammo when you reach higher levels. If you ask me, all of these factors make E-Tech pistols really great to get when you're first starting out. Just be aware that when you get more experience with the game, that E-Tech pistols aren't quite as good in some of the later difficulties. Number 7. The Shotgun 1340 and 1340 Shield So, both of these items are a part of the out-of-body experience side quest that the player can take on after they've saved or attempted to save Roland at the Bloodshot Stronghold. Upon returning to Bloodshot Stronghold, you'll encounter a Loaderbot AI core that you'll have to escort through both the Stronghold itself and some of the Ramparts areas, and eventually you'll be prompted to turn the core in to either Marcus or Dr. Zed, with the former giving you the Shotgun 1340 and the latter giving you the 1340 shield. Honestly, it's kind of up to you as to which of these you want. The Shotgun 1340 is the equivalent of a Blue Rarity Hyperion shotgun with similar parts, except for the fact that it has the specific loader's voice. Voice aside, this could be a decent thing to get as blue ready weapons are usually difficult to get early on, and having one that's roughly level 12 to 13 could be of good use to you. Alternatively, the shield is similar to a blue ready absorption shield, and while it's not a weapon, you can always pick it up if you're looking for better defense. Personally, I think the shotgun is a better choice, but feel free to turn the quest into Zed if you really want that shield. Regardless of what you choose though, taking the time to do this quest essentially guarantees you a blue rarity item, and in that sense, it's definitely worth it. Just be sure to complete the out of body experience quest and one of these could be yours. Number 6. The Teapot Though it's eventually outperformed by the likes of the Hornet once you reach endgame, it's generally a good idea to always pick up the teapot every time you get the chance. The two main reasons for this is that it's a pretty decent corrosive pistol that can be reliably acquired by completing a side quest, and beyond that, the teapot can eventually be used when taking on Wilhelm and the many loaders that spawn in the area that's right next to Tundra Express, which is called the end of the line. Compared to other doll pistols with similar parts, the teapot has the advantage of having improved accuracy and elemental effect damage, while suffering from lower base damage, fire rate, and magazine size. While those latter three attributes might suggest that the teapot is capable of lower DPS in some way, I'd say the teapot makes up for it with the ability to deal splash damage, which is something that most doll pistols can't do, save for the Hornet, which is a legendary weapon and is much harder to get. Plus, and as I mentioned earlier, the teapot is fairly easy to get where you may actually have a bit of trouble getting a corrosive doll pistol of the proper quality and level. So in that sense, I'd say the teapot has another advantage. So in the end, I think you'll find that the teapot is a great pistol, and if you want it, be sure to find Tiny Tina and complete the You Are Cordially Invited Tea Party side quest, and it's yours. Number 5. The Tinderbox So, the Tinderbox is a bandit fire pistol that can be acquired twice during a playthrough. The first time you get it is when you're in the southern shelf fighting Captain Flint, and upon defeating him, he'll usually drop the tinderbox as an item. However, and a little bit later on during your second playthrough, another tinderbox can be acquired in Tundra Express near the fast travel. If you shoot the snowman's head and it's the first time you've ever done it, you'll receive a tinderbox from here as well. As for the gun itself, the Tinderbox is a moderately powerful fire pistol, and while it does consume quite a bit of ammo, the Tinderbox is usually a better option than many other fire pistols because it deals splash damage and has pretty decent elemental effect chance. These two properties give it a bit of an edge when compared to most Malawan pistols, which may have some similar attributes, but lack the Tinderbox's magazine size, and in the case of other fire pistols from other manufacturers, they lack the splash damage that the Tinderbox has. 
I will admit you may not get as much use out of the tinderbox that you get from Captain Flint, but the one that you can get from the Snowman and Tundra Express should be very useful since it better matches the level of the enemies you're fighting. But be sure to pick up the tinderbox as it is a great pistol. Number 4. The Lascow. In terms of effort required, I think it's fair to say that the Lascow might require the least of any other item on this list to get as all you have to do is go to the caves area located in Frostburn Canyon and it's found in one of the pools inside. It's important to mention that its level won't scale with you as you're playing through your first playthrough, but if you're looking for an above average SMG to use at around level 8 or so, I think you'll find that the Lascow should perform pretty well. This is because the Lascow is, in a sense, the spiritual successor to the Double Anarchy from the first Borderlands, which was a weapon that had a high projectile multiplier and an inability to come in an element. However, it had fairly high fire rate, and you could basically walk up to enemies and spam this into their face or their crit spots and deal a lot of damage. Where it's different from the Anarchy, though, is the projectile multiplier is a bit lower, it has some burst fire capability like all doll weapons, and it also possesses a unique projectile pattern that's supposed to be in the shape of a bull, just like the Lascaux cave paintings in France. Overall though, the Lascaux is a great weapon that can be obtained fairly consistently regardless of difficulty. It won't scale and level with you like it will in Ultimate Voltage Mode, but if you don't mind that and you're looking for a nice SMG to use for those early levels, the Lascaux is a fantastic choice. Number 3. The Flame of the Firehawk Though it's technically a shield, the Flame of the Firehawk has the honor of being not only one of the best legendaries to obtain early on, but also one of the easiest as it's a quest reward for completing the cult following the Enkindling side quest, which is located in Frostburn Canyon and is the final quest in the cult following questline. What makes this thing so good though is that it's a Nova Shield that, unlike other Nova Shields, continues to spawn Novas after it's been initially depleted. This means you can have your shield go down and the Novas will continue to go off until either the shield starts to recharge, or until the player achieves a second wind, which causes a portion of their shield to recharge. As you might expect, this makes the Flame of the Firehawk a surprisingly powerful shield to have provided your shield ever goes down, and assuming you go in to fight for your life, you can actually defeat enemies from all of the subsequent Nova damage you're dealing. In fact, and if you happen to choose Krieg as your starter character, this is arguably one of his best shields due to how he can increase the amount of time it takes for the shields to recharge, thus allowing you to take advantage of this shield's effects even longer than you would otherwise be able to. In the end, I think it's fair to say that the Flame of the Firehawk is so good and so easy to get that you really shouldn't pass it up. The cult following questline is a bit long, but I would definitely say that it's worth it just to get one of these things. Number two. Jacob Snipers. Assuming you can pull off critical hits fairly regularly, sniper rifles in general are pretty powerful as whatever base damage you deal is roughly multiplied by 4 upon scoring a critical hit. Granted, the formula is actually more complex than that, but if you're just starting out with the game, snipers in general are pretty powerful and you can basically multiply that base damage by 4 to get your critical hit damage potential. The reason Jacob Snipers are usually better is because they possess superior critical base bonus compared to their counterparts from other manufacturers, and rather than yielding say 4 times the damage on a critical, Jacob's weapons can yield 5 times the damage on a critical, making them very effective early on. Speaking of early on, what's also nice about Jacob Snipers is that you can get 2 very early on in your playthrough. While this first one is a gearbox gun and requires DLC that you may or not have on the PC version, it's loaded onto your character at the very beginning of the game. However, the one that can be obtained on all versions of the game, regardless of whether you have DLC or not, is the one that you can get from Hammerlock in Liarsburg upon getting all of the Bullymong fur and returning to him during the Bad Hair Day side quest. This one's actually a bit better because of its higher level and green rarity, and thus because of that green rarity, it lacks the bolt action properties of white and blue rarity Jacob snipers. Beyond these two though, you're sort of going to have to get lucky finding these. Green rarity variants will usually work pretty well, and if you're really lucky or you use some golden keys, you can pretty easily get some purple rarity Jacob snipers from the golden chest and sanctuary. So, when you do see Jacob Snipers though, it might be a good idea to pick these up because they are usually really good. Number 1. The Contraband Skyrocket Grenade 
While I suppose this is technically an item that you don't necessarily farm for so much as you receive by picking up specific versions of the game, the Contraband Skyrocket is actually a pretty great grenade mod for beginners, even if it's a bit awkward to use. Upon being thrown, the Skyrocket will fly upwards and explode like a firework, which can be a little awkward at first, however, and with a little practice, the player can jump and aim downwards to get the Skyrocket's fireworks to explode on ground enemies, dealing quite a bit of damage in the process. What's also unique about this grenade is that it's essentially the only item in the game that scales with the player's level, meaning it will always deal damage corresponding to your character's level. This is so useful since you'll never have to re-farm for this once you get it, meaning that you could potentially use this grenade for a really long time and you never have to swap to anything else, especially during your first playthrough where it seems like most mobs go down to the contraband skyrocket grenade fairly easily. In general though, this is a really great grenade and while you usually need to purchase specific versions of the game to get this thing, it's usually in your inventory for a new character provided you're on PS4 and Xbox One. If you're on PC, you can usually get a friend to trade one to you if they have the limited edition DLC, but if you have the game of the year edition or newer, then this grenade should be on your new character at startup. Okay guys, thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit that like button, click the bell so you can be notified when I upload some more Borderlands videos, and as always, and again, thank you all so much for supporting this channel. Take care, and I'll see you all in the next one.